Um, so I'm just waiting for some of you to come here. <clears throat> Just a few more seconds, few more seconds <clears throat> to give everyone a chance. Welcome back to our Facebook Live. We do Facebook Live each Wednesday and Saturday at 10 o'clock at Central Time. And we are happy for you sending me your questions and your concern. And um, today I'm going to um, answer your question on how to find your courage in time of troubles or even in scary time under persecution. I love this definition of courage. You will never do anything in this world without courage. It, it is the greatest quality of uh, the mind next to honor. Aristotle said that. It is so true. Life is often unpredictable and it can get scary sometimes. Our uncertainty, even now in America, about the future can stir up so much fear and anxiety. It's not fun to feel powerless. And that's where faith comes in. We can look to God and to his word, the Bible, for help to replenish our faith and to give us the courage. The Bible is full of stories about people who face and overcame very scary circumstances. We talk about plagues, war, just look in the Bible. We can look at those stories in time of crisis in the Bible and even people that wrote book and we can get courage going to our darkest time. Reading those stories, you might be surprised on how quickly they instill confidence and yes, courage in us. Because now in America, it is our time, your time and my time to shine, to be brave, courageous people that we were meant to be. No question about this. I hope some of you read Saving My Assassin. It will inspire you. So I'm going to share with you lessons that I learned from four heroes of the Bible. And I'm going to share that from Moses, I learned the courage to face the past. From David, the courage to face impossible situation. From Esther, the courage to take a risk. And from Daniel, the courage to not give in. Yes, we have to learn those things today and now. Moses had the courage to face the past. Moses was a person just like us. Remember that he wanted to uh, help the Israelites and he killed someone? Well, he faced his insecurity and fear simply by responding to God's call to go back to Israel where his fear started. Moses was motivated by God's vision of working through him to save his people from the suffering that it will experience. We all know that when God called, Moses said, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? But I love what God said. But I will be with you and this shall be the sign for you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Exodus 3, 11 with 12. So Moses gained courage because God promised that he would be with him through this journey. And Moses' bravery inspired the Jewish to follow his lead through the partnering of the Red Sea to escape the Egyptians. Moses' courage inspired me in Romania to trust God to defend Christians in the, that socialist country. I knew that I was serving God and I served God, the same God that Moses served. 
and God proved to be so faithful. I hope you learn from Moses to trust God during this uncertain time in America. Think about, is God calling you back to where your fear started, like Moses? Do you believe God's promises to be with you and promise to be with you that he will do the work through you? If so, think about at least two members of your family or friends that you can inspire to imitate the courage that you gain from, from God. The world has many discouragers already. Encouraging others take, takes very little effort, but can mean the world to that person. Raise people up, celebrate them, then watch them pay it forward. You'll be blessed too. The second hero is David. David had the courage to face impossible situations. The book of 1 Samuel described the epic power struggle between the Israelites and the enemy, the Philistines. King Saul and the Israeli soldiers were dismayed by the day threats of their enemies, the giant. But David took courage to fight Goliath. David's courage was motivated by his dislike of Goliath's defiance against God and his people. That was his motivation. Yes, we remember that Saul told David, you are not able to go against this Philistinian to fight with him, for you are about a youth, and he, he has bear a man of war from his youth. But David, I love what David said. The Lord who delivered me from the power of the lion and from the power of the bear will deliver me from the hands of this Palestinian, Philistine. And finally, Saul said, go, and the Lord be with you. 1 Samuel 17, 32 to 37. David had courage because God protected him from danger in the past. And David was aware and re reminded himself of that. Based on that, David had steadfast confidence that God will deliver him again from Goliath. And David acted on faith to fight Goliath. And we all know that God gave him victory. David encouraged me to take the giant Goliath, dictator Ceausescu, to the court and win victories against him in court and his regime in socialist Romania. That David helped me to confront and helps me to confront my giants every day because I serve the same God. Back to the Israelites. As a result of David's courage, the whole army fought at his side and God helped them to win a big victory that day. Think about some experiences that you are afraid to tackle because you believe that they are impossible to overcome and trust God with them. Maybe you evaluate this situation in insurmountable or as a giant because you have only tried to work against them to win only by your own power. Trust God and act to overcome your fear of people, of your giants or your failure. The third hero is Esther. Esther had the courage to risk, to prevent the plan of Hu Hu Hanum to annihilate the Jewish in their country. Esther risked her life approaching her husband, King Xerxes, uninvited against the rules of the land. Esther was motivated by the faith taught by her uncle Mordecai that she would be fulfilling the call to save God's people through her. And Esther responded to that challenge with, yes, I'm going to fast as you do, and then I will go to the king. Through, through, all true, it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Esther 4.16. Esther prayed 
fasted and put her trust in God that will give her the courage to go and plead with King Xerxes to protect her people. God gave, gave her the courage and even more, brought about a great give, a victory to them that day. Value the people God placed in your life to help you live and encourage you to live a life according to God, like Mordecai did for Esther. Be a Mordecai in someone else's life. Be the Esther for your people. In the difficult situation in your life, pray and pass and fast. Put your trust in God's plan to bring you to victory. Learn day by day to trust God. Your choice to trust God will lead others to Christ. Be the Esther of your time. It's time for some of us to do it in America. The fourth hero is Daniel. Daniel had the courage not to give in. We all know a group of politi politically motivated administrators laid a trap for Daniel by manipulating the king to sign into law a regulation that will put to death everyone who worship any god other than the king. But David stood on his conviction to pray to God only in spite of the consequences of being thrown into a den of lions as punishment. Daniel was motivated to face his fear with God because he was grateful to God for what God blessed and protected him before this incident. That gratitude made him extraordinarily confident in God and also loyal to God. When, God, when Daniel knew that the document, the law was, uh, had been signed, he went to his home where he had the windows in his upper chamber open towards Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before God as he has done it before. Daniel 6.10 Daniel's courage grew through praying three times a day, even though it was against the law of the king. Daniel honored God in prayer, and that helped him to overcome the fear of men. Daniel encourages us to remain faithful to God. We are just people like him. Daniel's devotion to God even more inspired King Darius, a foreign king, to write to all nations in their day to fear God and reverend God. Read in Daniel 6, 25, 26. Do you pray in places where people can see you? Do, do people know that you are a Christian? Do you set aside a specific time just to be alone with God and pray and uh, seek him? Living courageously for Christ can make a positive impression of, on people. Think about family and friends that you can pray with to inspire them with the courage that you receive from God. Friends, this concludes my presentation and I hope it encourages you. Sums up that by trusting God, you can face the past, you can face the impossible situation and current situation, you can take a risk of being Christian even if you are persecuted and you have the courage not to give in. Trusting God will give you the courage that you need to act and be loyal to Christ. It is our time in America your time and my time to shine, to be brave, courageous people that we were created to be. To be fully trained on this, please go to virginiapradanabooks.com slash contact. Tell us your needs and we will help you with everything that you need. Until next time, 
on our Facebook Live Wednesday and Saturday at 10 o'clock. Be blessed and contact us if you need any help. I'm here to serve you. Remember that God, it's the same God that Daniel, Esther, David, and Moses, and many other heroes of the Bible serve, and he will protect you. He will give you the courage that you need to do mighty things in his power. You are here in America to be a tool in God's hands. I hope you read my book, Saving My Assassin, and you will be encouraged that he is able and capable to do mighty things through one person. Until next time, God bless you and be a blessing to others. May you be strong and courageous. Bye-bye.